Welcome to this lecture about 2A ANOVA. This lecture consists of three videos, where the first video introduces the basics of the 2A ANOVA. In the second video, we discuss different types of ANOVAs, such as between between ANOVA and within within ANOVA, as well as type 1 and 2 models. In the third video, we'll calculate the 2A ANOVA by hand so that we fully understand how the ANOVA table is generated. In this video, we'll go through the basics of a 2A ANOVA and interpret the interaction plots. We'll also interpret the 2A ANOVA table and discuss the differences between a 2A ANOVA and a 1A ANOVA. A 2A ANOVA, or a two-factor ANOVA, can examine the influence of two different categorical variables, also called factors, on a continuous dependent variable. If you understand how a 2A ANOVA works, you will also understand how a 3-way ANOVA works. A 3-way ANOVA simply involves 3 factors instead of just 2. Let's consider following example data where one wants to analyze the tumor size between 3 different treatments. The dependent variable is tumor size, which has been measured in several independent cancer patients that had about the same tumor size before the treatment started. The two categorical variables, the factors, are treatment and gender. For this example, it seems like the women, represented by the green bars, generally have smaller tumors compared to the men. Also, individuals on drug B seem to have smaller tumors in comparison to the ones on drug A. And individuals on drug A have smaller tumors compared to the ones in the control group which are on the traditional treatment. It therefore seems like both drugs reduce the tumor size in comparison to the traditional treatment. For a two-way ANOVA, we can ask three different questions. In this example, we can test if there is a difference in the mean tumor size between the three different treatments, if there is a difference in the mean tumor size between men and women, and we can also test if there is an interaction between treatment and gender. This means that we can test if men and women respond differently to the different treatments. We'll first have a look at the meaning of an interaction. If no interaction exists between the treatment and gender, we expect that men and women respond equally to the treatments. In this example data, we see that the women generally have smaller tumors than the men, irrespectively if they are in a control group or in the two drug groups. Interaction between factors can be studied by an interaction plot. An interaction plot is simply illustrated by lines that are drawn between the means of the subgroups. For example, if we draw these lines between the mean values for the treatments separately for the men and women, and remove the bars, we will end up with the following interaction plot. If the lines are approximately parallel in an interaction plot, we expect that no interaction exists between the two factors. Since the line seems to be parallel, we expect that no interaction exists between gender and treatment. If we study the following plot, where the women on drug B now have a much larger mean tumor size, and draw the following lines between the bars, we see that the lines in the interaction plot are no longer parallel. Therefore, we expect in this case that there is an interaction between the two factors, gender and treatment. Let's use the software to compute a two-way ANOVA of the following example data. When we run a two-way ANOVA, we will test three different null hypotheses. Well, the first null hypothesis in this example states that the means of the tumor size are equal for the different treatments. And the second null hypothesis states that the means of the tumor size are equal for men and women. Whereas the third hypothesis states there is no interaction between gender and treatment. This hypothesis implies that women and men respond equally to the treatments. In the following example, we use a significance level of 5%. Most statistical software tools we generate an ANOVA table like this one. We see that the two factors, treatment and gender, are significant since their associated p-values are less than 0.05.
This means that we can reject the first null hypothesis and conclude that there is a significant difference in the mean tumor size between the treatments. Similarly, we can reject the second null hypothesis and conclude that there is a significant difference in the mean tumor size between men and women. However, the interaction is not significant since the p-value is greater than 0.05. This means that the treatment has a similar effect on men and women. If you inspect the interaction plot, we see that the lines are parallel, which is the reason why the interaction is not significant. Based on the p-values in the ANOVA table, we can reject the first two hypotheses, but not the third hypothesis, which states that there is no interaction between gender and treatment. If we reject one or several hypotheses from a two-way ANOVA, we can continue with postdoc tests. However, when you perform a two-way ANOVA, many possible comparisons can be made. For example, we can compare the tumor size within the separate treatments, or between men and women, which is also tested in the two-way ANOVA since gender has only two categories. We can also compare the treatments for men and women separately, and even between men and women on the same or on different treatments. In total, we can make 19 possible comparisons for this example. However, the more comparisons we make, the more we need to adjust for multiple comparisons in order to reduce the risk that we commit a type 1 error. This will therefore increase the risk that we make a type 2 error. We should therefore only make comparisons that are related to the aim of our study instead of comparing all possible pairs in our dataset. For example, we might only be interested in comparing the tumor size between the treatments separately for men and women, which reduces the number of comparisons to 6. It does probably not make sense to compare the tumor size of the men in the control group to the women on drug A. We'll discuss more about postdoc tests in a separate video. We'll now have a look at the following example data where there is an interaction between the two factors. The difference from the previous data is that the women on drug B now have a larger mean tumor size compared to the women in the control group. In this example data, drug B seems to be bad for the women, but good for the men. If we study the ANOVA table based on this new data, we see that the treatment is significant, which indicates that there might be a difference in the tumor size between the different treatments. However, the fact of gender is no longer significant. If we pool the men and women from all three treatments, we clearly see that they have about the same tumor size, which explains why gender is not significant. If we study the interaction plot, we see that the lines are no longer parallel, which indicates that there is a significant interaction between gender and treatment. As expected from the interaction plot, we see that the interaction term is now significant since the p-value is less than 0.05. We can therefore conclude that men and women respond differently to the treatments. However, when the interaction is significant, we should be careful when we interpret the main effects. We'll come back to this later. Let's have a look at another example where two factors are involved in an experiment of growing plants. In total, we have 24 plants. These are split into three groups that have been exposed to different temperatures, cold, warm, and hot. In addition, in each temperature group, half of the plants were exposed to a low amount of watering, whereas the other plants are exposed to a high amount of watering. The investigator would like to test if the temperature influences the growth of the plants. If the amount of watering influences the growth. And if there is an interaction between temperature and watering. In other words, does the effect of watering depend on the temperature? If we draw lines between the mean values for the groups, we can start the interaction plot. We see that the lines are far from being parallel which indicates that the interaction will turn out to be significant if we compute a two-way ANOVA. It is clear from the plot 
that a low amount of watering is bad for the plants during hot temperatures. Whereas the amount of watering does not affect the growth of the plants in cold temperatures. It seems like the amount of watering has different effects on the plant growth for different temperatures. Therefore, the effect of the watering on the growth seems to depend on the temperature. If we compute a two-way ANOVA on this example data, we'll end up with the following ANOVA table. We see that both the temperature and watering are significant, as well as the interaction since all p-values are less than 0.05. Since the interaction term is significant, we can conclude that the effect of watering on the growth is dependent on the temperature. However, when the interaction term is significant, we have to be careful when we interpret the main effects. The main effects in this example are the factors temperature and watering. To illustrate why we have to be careful when the interaction is significant, We'll here look at a simpler example where we only have two types of temperatures, cold and hot. From this data, it is clear that the high amount of watering is bad for the plants at cold temperatures. But good if the temperature is high. If we compute a two-way ANOVA of this example, we'll get the following ANOVA table. The crossed lines in the interaction plot and the significant interaction term clearly indicate that the impact of watering is dependent on the temperature. However, when we now study the main effects, we see that these terms are non-significant. For example, if we look at the fact of temperature independently from watering, we see that the mean height of the plants is about the same for cold and hot temperatures and that the mean height of the plants is about the same for low and high amount of watering. This explains why the two factors are non-significant. It would be misleading to say that the amount of watering or the temperature has no effect on the growth of the plants. This is the reason why we should be careful to interpret the main effects of the ANOVA when we have a significant interaction term. Instead, we need to analyze their effect on each other just as we do when we study this plot. For example, we can follow up our result by a postdoc test, where we compare the effect of watering at cold temperature, or compare a low amount of watering between cold and hot temperatures. We'll now have a look at the advantages of a two-way ANOVA compared to two separate one-way ANOVAs. The main advantage of a two-way ANOVA in comparison to two separate one-way ANOVAs is that we can test for an interaction between the two factors and that our model fits better to the actual experimental design. If we run a two-way ANOVA where two factors have been used in the experiment, we can test if there is an interaction between the two factors. However, if we first run a one-way ANOVA with a factor treatment and then a second one-way ANOVA with a factor gender, it is not possible to test if there is interaction between the two factors. Another advantage is that a two-way ANOVA model is likely to fit much better to data that comes from an experiment involving two factors. Let's consider the following example where the tumor size has been measured over time on several patients on a traditional treatment, the control group, and patients on a new drug treatment. The patients are followed over time. The two factors are therefore time and treatment. Note that the spread around the means are about the same for the control group and the drug group when we consider both factors simultaneously. The assumption of equal variance between the groups therefore seems to be fulfilled for a two-way ANOVA. In comparison, if we join all data points from the different time points, we see that the control group has a much bigger spread around the mean in comparison to the drug group. This is simply due to the fact that the tumor grows much faster in the control group, which gives rise to a big difference in the tumor size over the different time points. In contrast, since the drug reduces the growth of the tumor over time, the variance of the tumor size over the different time points is much smaller in the drug group. In this example, a one-way ANOVA that compares the tumor size between the two different groups is likely to fail on the assumption of equal variance 
because the control group has a much higher variance than the drug group. In addition, the assumption of normality seems to be fulfilled when both factors are considered, since the data point seems to be scattered evenly around the means. But if we combine all the data points from the control group and plot them together, the assumption of normality is violated since the distribution is clearly skewed in the control group. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at different types of two-way ANOVAs and discuss when and how to use them. See you in the next lecture.